So what is the big deal about diabetes anyway? Okay, so what? You have high blood glucose. What damage is that going to do for your body? Well, there's really only four tiny tissues in the body that can be affected by this high sugar. And if you can actually get rid of these complications, you really wouldn't feel uh, that bad from even having diabetes. So it's like having high blood glucose, but without any major symptoms, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to get rid of those complications. And then if you want to get rid of the cause of this problem, you can do that too. But today I'm gonna show you five different vitamins that can get rid of the complications of diabetes. All right, so you have this high blood glucose. What four tissues does it affect? Well, it affects the eyes, okay? It affects arteries that go to your heart and other organs. It affects the nervous system, including the brain. And it affects the kidney, okay? Other than that, it doesn't really affect anything else. Now, what can it do to the eyes? Well, it affects the retina. Now, that's the main uh, nerve tissue that extends outside the brain and it's picking up information and it's bringing into the brain so you can actually see. Um, if you don't get rid of the complications from diabetes related to the eye, you can go blind, okay? You can also have uh, macular degeneration. You can also get cataracts. You can even get glaucoma. You can have a lot of problems with the eye. The next problem is the vascular system, the artery, okay? You have this layer it's called the endothelial layer inside the arteries. It's highly susceptible to high blood glucose. And so the complication of diabetes is placking and clots, okay, which obstructs blood flow to the heart muscle. Or it can actually obstruct blood flow to your brain. So if you have high blood glucose flowing through your arteries in your brain, um, that can lead to dementia or even Alzheimer's. And, or Parkinson's, or other types of degenerative um, brain problems. But also not just the uh, nerves in your brain, also the nerves in the rest of your body too, like the bottom uh, nerves on your feet. You can get what's called peripheral neuropathy where you have this numbness or tingling or burning in the bottom of your feet. It can happen in the hands and the fingertips. It also can affect your digestion. It can affect the autonomic nervous system. It can create you know, a lot of issues. And the last body tissue that this high blood glucose affects is kidney tissue, okay? High blood glucose, um, diabetes, is the number one cause of end-stage renal failure, okay? So it really destroys the kidney. Now, what is the kidney? Kidney is really a filter for your blood. And all this blood and the sugar goes through it and it just rusts out the kidney filters. Now, when we say complications from high sugar, what actually does that mean? Like, for example, when you combine high sugar in your blood, okay, your red blood cells, you have hemoglobin, that's the protein. When you combine high sugar with that, you get this condition called glycation, okay? Glycation is the combination of sugar and protein, and it gets all stuck and sticky, and it, it makes that tissue um, non-functional. Okay, and this is what A1C is. It's basically um, a number that represents glycated hemoglobin, which is hemoglobin that is damaged and it's on a scale. So you can tell how bad the diabetes is. It goes on a scale, it should be low, um, but if it's high, you can equate that to a certain amount of sugar flowing through your bloodstream. And so one reason I like A1C is it gives you an average of blood sugars for a period of like three months. So it's better than just a one-shot uh, assessment because you're looking at an average and you can kind of see overall what's happening. So that's what glycation is, a combination of sugar or carbs that turn into sugar and protein. And you can also get this from eating foods that combine sugar with protein and are heated. Like, for example, let's take a barbecued ribs, right? That would be an example. Or, for example, if you're eating like... Um, I don't know, hamburger from McDonald's and you have the bun on it, right? You have the, there's, the, there's carb, sugar, and protein, and then you have a Coke, right? And then you have fries. But see, fries have very little protein. It's mainly carbohydrate and fat. So you can also get glycation if you combine sugar with a fat, okay? As in French fries or a donut where you're deep frying it, especially ice cream, okay? Because you have all the sugar and fat and there is some protein in there, but you're just getting major uh, glycation when you consume that. 
So when this glycation occurs and it builds up, it builds up into something called advanced glycation end products, okay? And the more of that that you have kind of stuck in the tissues, uh, the more complications you're going to have because with that comes a lot of free radical damage, inflammation, and something called oxidative stress, which is just a lot of oxidation. And it's like your body is rusting out and these tissues are becoming unavailable to you. And so these four tissues, the eye, the nerve and brain, the arteries of the heart and other parts of the body and the kidney are the tissues that can accumulate more of these advanced glycation end products than other tissues. And the acronym is A-G-E-S, like an age. So when you think glycation, you can just think you're going to age very quickly. You're going to get older very quickly because it's going to make these tissues uh, very old and damaged. Now, what's interesting about this, there are natural things that can inhibit this glycation, okay? So let's say, for example, <laughs> you don't even change your diet, right? But you want to get rid of the complications for diabetes. This is what you should do. There actually is five vitamins you could take to help you that can act as antioxidants, okay? And they're pretty potent. The first one, and the most important one, is a type of B1 vitamin called a benfotamine. Okay, benfotamine has been known to help clear up these complications, especially with like peripheral neuropathy, but also with other tissues of the eye. And I'm not saying it's going to clear up damage that you had in the past, but it can definitely reduce the complications and the ongoing damage that occurs with high blood glucose. So benfotamine, that's, that's B1, that's the first one. Uh, number two is vitamin C, okay? It's a very uh, potent antioxidant. You probably already know that. Uh, it's very, very good for the inside of your heart, but also in other tissues as well. When you take a vitamin C, I would highly recommend that you get a food-based vitamin C complex, not just a synthetic version of the vitamin C as in ascorbic acid, okay? There's a big difference. The next one is vitamin D. Vitamin D is an, an, a very important vitamin. It's probably one of the most important vitamins, but it too can act to counter this glycation in a big way. And then the fourth one is vitamin E. Vitamin E, and I'm in the form of tocotrienols. Anytime you take uh, vitamin E, I would recommend you take that in a form that's tocotrienols, not the tocopherols, okay? Not that tocopherols aren't good. Tocotrienols just work a lot better. And then when you buy a vitamin that's a tocotrienol, I would get the tocotrienol mix or complex, but without these tocopherols because they tend to compete. Okay, so vitamin E, very important to reduce glycation. And the last vitamin is vitamin B6. B6 can also reduce this glycation. So that is your five vitamins. Now there are other things too that can improve glycation, like alpha lipoic acid. Okay, that's a good one. Like the phytonutrient in green tea. It's called EGCG, like aged garlic. That's another good one. And bitter melon, and quercetin, and curcumin. And there's many, many others as well. If you have a very nutrient dense salad with microgreens, for example, you're going to get a lot of great things in those plants to help counter glycation, okay, because you want antioxidants. Now, fasting, both intermittent fasting and regular periodic prolonged fasting, okay, can greatly improve this glycation by causing this condition called autophagy. Autophagy is not a thing, it's a condition that occurs. It's like the recycling of old damaged proteins, okay? And that's what glycation really is all about, is it damages these proteins and it becomes unavailable. So when you have autophagy from fasting, you can go in there and clean all that up. This is why you feel so much better and you have neurological brain improvements, heart improvements, immune improvements, blood sugar improvements, and the list goes on and on and on. And then exercise. Exercise can also reduce glycation, okay? 
So that's all about the complications. If you want to correct the deeper problem, you have to fix the diet, okay? And the way to do that is to get on the healthy version of the ketogenic diet mixed with intermittent fasting. And if you don't have a plan for that, you should definitely watch this video right here.